Investing mistakes are inevitable, especially when you're a beginner, and some mistakes are definitely more costly than others. Unfortunately, we tend to focus on investing mistakes as it relates to the risk associated with the particular investment, be it precious metals, real estate, or running a business, but in reality, there is a much bigger threat to your investing. It's you. I always tell beginners to start by investing their time before they invest their money, as rule number one of investing is, don't lose money. You've often heard me quote Benjamin Graham as he famously said, the investor's chief problem, even his worst enemy, is likely to be himself. Let me tell you from personal experience and personal losses that I've taken, I am far more concerned about me than any of the external factors such as market conditions, market volatility, economic conditions, or you pick. While Graham's work predates the development of behavioral finance, many of the principles and ideas have parallels with behavioral finance. And this isn't our first time talking about behavioral finance on this channel, but as a quick reminder, behavioral finance combines principles of psychology and economics to understand how individuals make financial decisions. The underlying belief is that people are not always rational when it comes to making financial choices and that they are subject to biases and emotions that can lead them to make suboptimal decisions. Overall, the goal of behavioral finance is to help individuals make more informed, rational, successful financial decisions by understanding and mitigating the impact of behavioral biases. Hopefully by now you all know that I'm just as interested in helping you grow as a person as well as an investor and a stacker, which is why I'm sharing part of my personal story. As I've shared, my investing journey started 20 years ago in real estate, and while I invested an appropriate amount of time learning how to technically and fundamentally be a very good investor, I had a major Achilles heel issue. At that time, my struggle wasn't related to understanding money or how the game of money was played. I had a lack of emotional control and emotional intelligence, particularly when it came to understanding and managing and expressing my feelings about money. Back then, I was making lots of money. I owned seven different properties between California and Texas. And even with that, I still had a deficit mindset. And deep down, I still felt inadequate. I still felt poor. I thought my brain was running the show when in reality, it was my emotions. As I made more money, I stopped making rational decisions. And that ultimately cost me a marriage and more than $100,000. While I was making lots of money, I couldn't make enough money. I couldn't own enough. It didn't matter how smart I was because as you've heard me say, our emotions and cognition or thoughts work like a teeter-totter. The higher one goes, the lower the other one drops. And I will tell you firsthand that if your emotions are not in check, it doesn't matter how smart you are or how good the investment is, you will screw it up. And let me tell you, I screwed it up along with her marriage. As I said, my emotions were running me as an investor and as a person. And the most detrimental part was that I was completely unaware or at least unwilling to explore the reality that it was even a possibility that I was being run by my emotions. Unfortunately, and maybe even fortunately, it wasn't until after everything imploded that I completed my master's in counseling and discovered behavioral finance and the whole school of thought related to the psychology of money. It was not until then that I began to really put things together, that investing is just as much about what's in your heart as it is what is in between your ears. This is exactly how two stackers can have the same budget but end up with very different stacks and very different results. If you can walk away with this important lesson and the two techniques I'm going to share, then I'm certain you will be a very successful investor investor, a better person, and even a better significant other, boyfriend, spouse, girlfriend, whatever it is. So let's start with cab. Yeah, like taxi cabs actually, but not exactly how you think. No, I'm not talking about HBO's taxi cab confession or cash cab trivia show. Can you be serious for a moment? 15 years ago, before there was an Uber and a Lyft, anytime you flew into a new city, the first thing you would do is hail a yellow taxi cab. Long before there were navigation systems, your cab driver always knew the best way to get around. They knew how to get everywhere, great places to eat, basically everything about the city. Now we have Lyft and Uber and some guy named Steve picking us up in a Prius who can't get himself out of the parking lot without a GPS. The point I'm trying to make is that no matter where you were, where you wanted to go, the cab driver knew how to get you there. The same is true when it comes to any challenging situation you face, be it related to investing or even in your personal life. Cabs, C-A-B-S, will get you exactly where you need to go because CAB stands for C for cognition or thoughts, 
A for affect or your feelings, B for behaviors, what have you done already, and what behaviors have worked for you in the past, and S has two meanings. One of S is for the situation, meaning what's the context of what's going on, and the other S is what are your potential solutions. 95% of the viewers on this channel are men. So let's talk about men and the reality that we don't do this very well. We don't check in with ourselves to ask ourselves, what are we feeling, what are we thinking, what are we going through? We just tend to, we tend to plow forward. No matter what, I want you to start asking yourself these questions whenever you're faced with a challenging situation, whenever you have to make a big decision, whenever you bark on something new, you feel FOMO, or even when you're just making a simple purchase. Take a moment and really dig in and find out what exactly you're thinking, feeling, what have you done in the past, why, what can you do? The, all those questions are so critical. This also works in your personal life. The next time you find yourself in a disagreement or challenging situation with your significant other, I want you to resist rushing to make a decision or arguing. I want you to pause and ask yourself, what are my cabs telling me? This will force you to think as well as acknowledge your emotions. In that moment, you will find balance. You will find better solutions and make better decisions after asking yourself and truly taking inventory. The key is that you have to learn how to listen to yourself. Don't gloss over this. I mean, really take inventory so that you can learn and make better decisions. As a reminder, on March 1st, we are starting Doc's Monthly Savings Challenge, where as a community, we will share tips, generate ideas, and serve as an accountability group that will help you save and or earn an extra $250 or more to bolster your savings and your, or your stacking budget. All of this is happening on Discord and it's totally free, folks. It literally does not make sense for you to miss out on an opportunity to join us. Invest in your learning and get greater access to me and the rest of the Stacker University students. And did I mention it's free? Info's in the description. Also in the description are the links to four of my latest articles featured in the Red Rock Report. And last time I checked, my article on the Upside Down was featured on the homepage. Stackers University, we are working hard to help you be the best person and investor you can be. So can you please help us by hitting that like button to show support and help spread the message? Thank you. Also, don't forget to subscribe because we are just 250 people away from reaching the goal of 5,000 subscribers. And I would love to hit that number before our one year anniversary on YouTube, which is March 7th. Now, where was I? Here's the second takeaway. And it's one of my favorite poems ever. And it's written by Ray Hewton and it's titled, Please Just Listen. Again, men, if you really take this poem in and you remember it and you live by it, I promise you, you will be a better person and your significant other will love you even more. Because as the poem goes, please just listen. When you listen to me and you start giving me advice, you have not done what I've asked. When I ask you to listen to me and you begin to tell me why I shouldn't feel that way, you are trampling on my feelings. When I ask you to listen to me and you feel that you have to do something to solve my problems, you have failed me, strange as that may seem. Listen, all I asked was that you listen, not talk, or do, just hear me. Advice is cheap. 25 cents will get you both Dear Abby and Billy Graham in the same newspaper, and I can do for myself. I'm not helpless. Maybe discouraged and faltering, but not helpless. When you do something for me that I can do for myself, you contribute to my fear of inadequacy, but when you accept as a simple fact that I do feel what I feel, no matter how irrational, then I can tr quit trying to convince you and get about the business of understanding what's behind this feeling. And when that's clear, the answers are obvious. Listen, that is so good. You should rewind this video and listen to that again. I need you to learn how to not only listen to your significant other, I need you to learn to listen to you. What's going inside of you? Because if you can control what's going on inside of you and learn to think in the presence of your emotions, not allowing your emotions to think for you, you will become a infinitely better investor. FOMO is nothing more than your emotions running you and causing you to take actions. So your emotions are doing your thinking. I want you to change it. I want you to learn how to think in the presence of your emotion. I often get asked, how do I resist FOMO? And I usually give some technical answer, but the real answer is what I just shared with you. I've learned to acknowledge and control my emotions. I don't allow my emotions to do my thinking. I've learned to think in the presence of those emotions. That's my hope for you. The other question I often get a lot is, how do I resist the temptation to buy the pretty or high premium coins? Using cabs, cognition, affect, behavior, situation, solution, forces me to think, which reduces my need for that emotional hit of dopamine, aka the happy hormone, to make me feel good. 
The thought of getting a great deal is far more meaningful to me and gives me the real hit of dopamine more far more than the beauty of the coin. Remember, investing is with your mind, not your eyes. As I've said before, who cares how pretty it is when 99% of the time it will be in a dark safe. It's taken me a long time and cost me a lot financially and non-financially to learn some level of emotional control and emotional intelligence as an investor and a person. But trust me, I'm far from 100%. My hope for you is that this video will help you understand the importance of managing your emotions as an investor and that calves and the Please Just Listen poem will help you in that process. So many people, more than 90% of the time, sell low and buy high because they're not in control of their emotions. Instead of being greedy when everyone is fearful, they're just as scared and they wait for things like price to be the confirmation. You, you have to learn how to control yourself and your emotions. In the comments, tell us about the role emotions have played or are currently playing in your investment. Do you think cabs is something you could use? What about this poem, please just listen. What part sticks with you? You can always put another A in the gradebook comment section to make sure everyone knows that you're an A plus student, always stack smarter, never stop learning.